Uh, just a reminder about tonight. We have, um, I will just give you the final, final lineup. I think most people know this already, but there are 17 people involved in this. So it, um, it can be a little bit tricky. You've got my computer up, right? Uh, okay. So let's go through uh, the lineup tonight. All right. <laughs> For the Republican kids' table, full of the losers who did not reach the top ten, Rick Santorum. Yes, he's still in the race, folks. This could be your last chance to see Rick Santorum as a presidential candidate. Bobby Jindal will be on the stage making sure you know he's not a Muslim, folks. In fact, he may even have his own, like, periscope feed, like a a little surveillance feed. Carly Fiorina will be there. Um, I, you know, to be honest with you, nobody's been paying enough attention uh, to her. Uh, but I wonder if she'll have to answer for running, uh, what was it, HP into the ground. Lindsey Graham still in the race. I think he's uh, somewhere polling right around 0.07%. And you only feel good about polling at 0.07% when you're on stage with George Pataki and Jim Gilmore. And then finally, Rick Perry and his glasses will be there tonight. On at the grown up table, which is actually really not so grown up, ladies and gentlemen, in the pole position, in the center of the debate stage, surrounded by those trying to climb up upon Trump Tower, <laughs> towering over them will be Donald Trump. Then, of course, Jeb Bush, Scott Walker, apparently he was under investigation, Mike Huckabee. Well, the real question is, will Huckabee push any uh, vitamin sales tonight? Cinnamon-based solution to diabetes. Dr. Ben Carson will be in the house. Will he raise a copy of Mein Kampf and tell everyone this is what has happened to America? Ted or will Huckabee beat him to it? Ted Cruz will be there. Mr. Bacon. Marco Rubio will be there. Apparently, in the um, pre-debate, he has required multiple bottles of water. Rand Paul whose uh, half of his campaign team got indicted the other day, right? From uh, their... their, Time uh, to call your Jews. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Chris Christie, yet to be indicted. Oh, did I even forget to mention Rick Perry's uh, still under indictment? Okay, sorry about that. Chris Christie. uh, And then the only person who I think uh, may proved to be the only one who can say anything to Donald Trump will be uh, John Kasich. That's right. I brought that down. There you go. So uh, there you have it. Uh, that is the, um, the lineup tonight. Here, here's like the sort of, the, between the two debates, here's my big uh, um, uh, sort of piece of analysis. Like, if you're in the little kids debate, now, had, had Kasich been there, he would have tried to become the adult in there. I imagine Rick Perry is actually going to try and become the adult. The question is, will Bobby Jindal and Rick Santorum end up dragging them down into the gutter? I don't know. Because, you know, they, in this situation, all they're trying to do is to get somebody at Politico or to get one of those guys like uh, Halpern or one of those guys to say, hey, they did great in the debate. This is a candidate that should really be uh, people should pay more attention to in the big boy debate. I think Donald Trump is just going to start out, like I say, by saying, hey, 
I'm not going to pick on anybody, but if I didn't think, if I thought that any one of you was actually qualified to be president, I would not have jumped into the race, given up $400 million because NBC wanted me to be the star of their TV show because I did great. And Macy's wanted me to keep selling my things because I did great. And the LPGA or the PGA wanted me to, to, you know, sell golf shoes because I was great. But I gave all that up because I care about America. And if you guys were in any way competent, I wouldn't even have to be here and I could go out and keep making money. That's, I imagine, how he's going to start the debate. And then all of them are going to have to address it or they're going to look weak. And we all know that the most important thing in Republican governance is to rhetorically not look weak.